Hello everybody and welcome to this review for Star Wars The Last Jedi. Uh, this review is both spoiler and non-spoiler. Uh, the non-spoiler section is in the beginning and the spoiler section is in the uh, end where this timestamp is. Uh, just go to that section when you want to hear spoilers uh, and stop the video there if you don't want to hear anything. So, that being said, what did I think about this movie? Uh, as many of you know uh, in the past, I love Star Wars. Star Wars is one of my favorite movie franchises, and I love that it's now coming out every single year. And I love that we are getting new films that really uh, enhance the experience of Star Wars. That being said, this movie is not perfect. It has some faults that I will get into later. Um, and this movie, its great moments are so great and so good that it's very difficult to knock this movie for any downsides and anything, any faults that it may actually have. Uh, and it has some, like I said. They're, it's difficult to talk about a Star Wars movie without spoilers because you don't want to give anything away. You don't even want to talk about the plot, and I'm not going to talk about the plot in this section of the video. So I'm going to tell you what I liked about the acting, the making of the actual film. This film looks nothing like any other Star Wars movie, and in a great way, actually. Uh, from the opening shots, from the action, to just some of the images that you, you're going to think about after the film, and you're like, I want that as a screensaver on my computer. I want that framed, you know? There's a lot like that in the movie that has a lot of staying power in your mind. There's a lot of moments that you'll remember throughout the film. And from an acting standpoint, it's, be it, it's beautifully done. Uh, standouts are Adam Driver, Daisy Ridley, Mark Hamill, and the late Carrie Fisher, who is, she, she gives it her all in this. And I say Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher, this is probably their best performances in all of Star Wars. And they've had some good ones. So I think they both really were at the top of their game in this film. And uh, Mark Hamill in particular, he could be nominated for Best Supporting Actor, in my opinion. He was that good. Um, like I said, the action, there's an action sequence in this movie that I've never seen before. Never seen anything like that, and that was awesome. Uh, there is just great imagery. And Ryan Johnson does a really good job with the story that I'm not going to talk about right now. And he does a great job with the cinematography, the poetry of the film. There's a lot of poetry. George Lucas has a famous uh, quote from when he made, from the making of The Phantom Menace. He's like, it's like poetry, these things, they beats, they rhyme. Like in uh, The Phantom Menace, Anakin, uh, you know, flies in and destroys that shield, that, that one, that big spaceship in, uh, in space that's controlling the droids, much like Luke does in he, he destroys the Death Star, you know, the first movie. He, and he's like, it's poetry, they rhyme. There's an entire video out there of like, hey, these are beats that are similar in the Star Wars prequels in the original trilogy, and now in the sequel trilogy, beats that are similar. This movie has a lot of moments that reminded me of a lot of the other Star Wars movies, and then some. And just moments that were just plucked out of dreams. You're like, I, I wish, I'm, I'm so happy that this movie did what it did. There are expectations that you go into this movie, leave them at the door. I, 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 I implore you, please leave your expectations at the door, and you'll enjoy this movie a heck of a lot. And again, this is why I kind of, I took a couple of days to think about this movie and how I felt about it, because there are definitely things I didn't like, uh, or was just not that interested in, because there are plot lines and things you're more interested in than others. And you find... The state of the galaxy is just incredible in this, and I like the way Ryan Johnson depicts that. He does that in a very Ryan Johnson way, in a very unique way, something that J.J. Abrams almost didn't do and had, didn't have time to do. This movie has is two and a half hours long. I wanted more, and from some plot lines in particular. But no, I really enjoyed this movie overall. Uh, John Williams' soundtrack was fantastic. Uh, he has some new themes in there I really like, bring back some old themes as well, and some uh, of obviously the themes from The Force Awakens, the newer themes from that, which work very beautifully together with the original themes and the new themes, and it just, it just, it just merges together very well. Uh, and before I go into spoilers here, I want to say uh, the Porgs were awesome, the little like uh, 
furry little guys. That, like they look like birds uh, in the trailer. They're like, Burr! yeah, they're, they're adorable. And they have some good moments. Um, BB-8 was great. Um, I liked the humor in the movie. There was a fair amount of humor in it as well, and I thought that was also very good. And the biggest thing I can tell you guys is go into this movie blind. I did. I had only seen the major trailers, uh, and I saw the I saw like the teaser trailers that were released, and then I saw that main trailer that they played on like Monday Night Football, and that was it. And then like here and there, I saw like a TV spot, but I tried to stay away from it for like two and a half months or whatever. I tried to stay away from it all, and I did, and I walked into this movie with, with expectations, okay? I, it was impossible to leave them all at the door, but there are things I'm like, okay, I, I remember sitting in the car, I'm just like, man, what's, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And I went into this movie thinking, okay, whatever my head was thinking this movie needs to be, that can't be, because whatever that was on that screen, whatever Ryan Johnson shot, that's the movie. Whether I like it or not, that's what it is. And not saying that I, I forced myself to like this movie, I didn't. It just, the decisions that were made, maybe some expectations I had and things turned out completely different, or, oh, well, there was a beat that I thought was, was going to be in the movie, or things that they maybe set up that were in the movie, that I thought could be in the movie, that weren't. And sometimes you just need to leave your expectations at the door. Check yourself and be like, yes, I love Star Wars. But you know what I love more? A good movie. Uh, and this is a daggone damn near good movie, and I love it. Uh, I'm going to give The Last Jedi a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, and the .5 that's taken off, I will explain right now. So, if you have not seen The Last Jedi, leave this video, go see it, come back. And we can talk spoilers for a second. Uh, where to start, Okay. So when I left this movie, I was floored. I was just like, where do I start reviewing this thing? How in the world do I start talking about this thing? Because there's so many moments, that there's so much from the very beginning to the very end, that I was just like, I, where do I begin? Where do I begin even talking about this with my parents? Where do I start? And I, I, had to, I have to tell you, Let's start at the very beginning. The, the lessons that Poe Dameron learns throughout this movie are great. About leadership and what does it mean to be a team player. And there's just a great shot of Carrie Fisher after they take down that dreadnought, which is a really awesome way to start the movie with a cool space battle. Um, one of the better space battles I've seen. It looked great. I liked BB-8, you know, happy beeps, happy beeps. You know, I, I like that. I, I liked the humor between Hux and Poe. You know, the, the oh, I'm, I'm still holding for uh, General Hux. I liked that. Um, the Dreadnought looked really cool. Uh, and that whoever the, the captain was of that ship was, I liked him. That They always have, like, the evil British guy, and I really like that. It's just a Star Wars thing, and uh, I, I, I found that very interesting. Uh, I liked those characters. I liked that Leia was like, okay, look, you got it out. Let's bring in our bombers. Let's get out of here. And he's like, no, we have a chance to take down the Dreadnought. And literally smacks him across the face and is like, you're demoted. Because there's a great shot where Leia's looking at the monitor. She's like, they blew it. They, she's like, everybody's cheering. They blew it up. They blew it up. And she's looking at the screen and she sees there's like half the fleet's gone. You know, half their ships are gone. All their bombers are gone. And then she tells him, he's like, he's like, there were heroes in that mission. And she's like, dead heroes. I thought that, <laughs> that set a tone for that move. This set, that set a tone. For the movie. And then obviously uh, uh, Finn wakes up and he's like, where's Rey? And they cut to the island. And you know, we, we see Rey, she's about to hand the lightsaber to Luke Skywalker. He hands it to, you know, he gets it, he looks at her, everything, he looks down at the lightsaber, he's holding it there, the music's swelling, swelling, tosses it over his shoulder. That, that, I, I saw some people were laughing, I was laughing, my, my mom was laughing, everybody was like, wait, what? And, and, and even Ray was was taken aback. She's like, Ma Master Skywalker. And then, then we were introduced to who this, this Luke Skywalker is. He asks where Han is, and you're just like, no. Um, and you see a lot of those things. And I really liked the way they handled Han in this movie. Uh, and Luke. Let's talk about Luke. This Luke Skywalker is Luke Skywalker that is broken. 
he is a man that had, had that made a split second decision that he has to face and regret for the rest of his life. He made a mistake. He judged somebody before their actions. Now I heard people say, well, again, and people there are some people who are like, Luke Skywalker would never do that. And I'm like, well, if you could look into the heart or the the future of say an evil dictator in history, take your pick and see all the things that they were to do Stalin, Hitler, name him, you know, name him. Name all those people, and then you could look into their, their future and see all the people that they affected, killed, all those all those people. Would you for a split second think, I need to end this? That is a that is that is something, and we all would probably say, that's a difficult decision because they haven't done it yet. And it's an interesting way of thinking about it. And Luke, in the way we see that that flashback multiple times from a different perspective, we see it from Luke's perspective, we see it from uh, Kylo's perspective, we see it from, and then we see the actual truth that happens. And I love the way that they did that. I love that they, they showed us partial truths that eventually came to a whole. Each side was right. He's like, he came to kill me. I came to confront him. It's somewhere in the middle. And it was somewhere in the middle. That I liked that. The other thing was, I love that Kylo and Rey, and this was a great device to get our protagonist, our antagonist, to talk throughout the movie. So they just didn't meet each other at, you know, the one hour and 45 minute mark or whatever, you know. I'm glad that they had them force connecting, but it was also through Snoke, and I liked that. There's a great line that Snoke says early on about, where Kylo Ren is leading, and he's, he's like, I, you know, he's like, I thought you would be Darth Vader, but what I got was a child in a mask, or something along those lines. And that's a great line, because it's, it means the mask is, Kylo believes the mask is what will bring, will bridge him to being more Darth Vader, and Snoke is like, take that ridiculous thing off, you're, you're just a child, you know, and then he destroys the mask, and, and there's this anger in him, and I really liked. I loved Kylo Ren in this movie. If you didn't like him in the last movie, or you didn't like Rey in the last movie, you thought he was a Mary Sue and all that stuff, get out of here. Just get watch this movie. Those two characters inter interacting, um, those two characters learning about the Force, those two characters learning about one another, I really liked that. And let's get right into it, the twists and the turns in this movie. I thought Leia died when she flew out into space. And then she, like, Force pulls herself back. That was the one thing, that was one of the things where I was like, that's a little weird. Maybe just because it looked weird. Because we've never seen that before. It was a great moment. Because it took something you're just like, oh, we we all thought she was dead. But then apparently not. So that was a great moment to keep her alive. And she stayed alive throughout the entire movie. So bravo to Lucasfilm for not changing the movie too much. They could have had her be um, like Holdo in, in a light speed through the ship. Which was an amazing scene, by the way. There are, like I said, in the non-spoiler section, there are things in this movie I've never seen before. That's one of them. The Praetorian Guard fight with Luke, uh, I'm sorry, with uh, Rey and Kylo back-to-back -back after they killed Snoke. Like, I'm just getting into all the spoilers right now, so. First off, that fight was incredible. But what led to that fight was even better. Rey and, and Snoke having their back and forth. And Snoke being like, I feel in Kylo, I feel your resolve. I feel you turning your lightsaber to strike your true enemy down. And literally he's turning the, the Skywalker lightsaber towards Snoke. And it cuts right through him and Ray grabs it. And it just, there's some great moments there. And then they turn back to back. And it does like this fast slow-mo type thing where they're all setting up. And then they start fighting. And Kylo's crossblade with her blue lightsaber and... The way each of the characters looked, because they looked different from earlier in the film, I, I liked Kylo's outfit. He didn't have like the flowy uh, cape like he did in the previous film, or the hood. Um, and Rey wore a different outfit than she wore in the earlier part of the movie. Her hair's different, it's longer. You could tell she looked like the hero, he looked like the villain, and we ultimately understand that by the end of the movie. He's the villain, she's the hero, you know? And, and I love that she's from no, nowhere. You know, Jakku. You know, you know, where are you from? Jakku. That, okay, that's actually nowhere. You know? And that she's a nobody. And that's great because that 
that proves my thing about midichlorians right there. That midichlorians actually are a smart thing, and it keeps the Jedi going. Everybody's like, no, she's got to be. She's got to be related to somebody. She has to be Luke's daughter. She's got to be uh, Leia's uh, secret daughter. She's got to be a Kenobi. She's got to be Ezra's kid. No, it's better if she's no one because one, it expands the universe. It makes it, and also the only people. Because the Jedi never married. They were told not to love in the prequels, right? So, Jedi are not supposed to have attachment and love and get married and have children, right? The only person that did that, that we know of technically, is Anakin, right? And I'm assuming he's not the only person that ever did that, but... For argument's sake, let's say he, like, is at that time period. He's the only one that ever did that, really. Okay, Luke and Leia are the exceptions. They're may, they're, they are natural birth and the Force lineage. And so is Ben Solo, Kylo Ren. Rey, the Force awakened everybody. Remember Broom Kid at the end of this movie? Like, that's my whole thing about midichlorians. And that's why they work. Because it allows anyone to... Not anyone, but it allows people who are more attuned to the Force become Jedi. It, it allows the Jedi Order or the force-using order, or as you will, to move on and pass on. I love the explanation of the force, and let's talk about the force for a second. Yoda comes back. Yoda comes... I mean, that scene with his music, and it was Puppet Yoda too. Uh, it was great. Hearing Frank Oz as Yoda talk to an older Luke and giving him another lesson, teaching him, look, we are what they grow beyond and you know we are our fail failure is the greatest teacher and that that's so true uh you don't learn you don't necessarily always learn from making you know from success and i liked that a lot i liked that they really honed in on that stuff um all the stuff on the island just a luke skywalker that literally milks an animal <laughs> like Everybody's like, that was a weird scene. I'm like, but it proves that this Luke Skywalker is a different Luke Skywalker. And I love that Ray's like, I've seen your daily routine. You're not doing much. The, the X-Wing is at the bottom of the sea. Um, it just, it was great. I like the caretakers and all that was, that was nice. And that forest tree, you know, that was there. And that, you know, I love that. Also, I love the scene where uh, Luke talks about the Jedi in their prime allowed Darth Sidious to to become the emperor and just and wipe them out. You know, it was their hubris. I really liked a lot of that stuff. And let's talk about Luke at the end. He dies. In the most honorable and heroic way, saving, keeping that spark alive. The spark of the resistance, keeping that alive. I like that Poe and Rey actually now finally met, um, even though they technically met in the novelization of The Force Awakens. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> doesn't matter. But... I love that. I loved how Luke comes back. You know, he has the lightsaber that they, they destroy the Skywalker lightsaber. He has the lightsaber and you're just like, and then uh, I figured this out later when he moves and things and he does that like weird, like he like does like the matrix thing. And then kind of like, he kind of like slides out. No dust. Remember on that planet crate, which is a really cool planet, by the way, all the plants in this were really cool. I'll get into what I don't like in just a second. Then I'll end the video. Um, but when he's doing all that, he doesn't pick, you know, none of the dust or the red dust flies up. When Kylo does, that's why they keep showing shots of their feet. When Kylo does it, the red dust flies up. When Luke does it, he doesn't. That's one of like four clues that proves he's not there. That does the um, Poe saying, how in the world did he get here? You know, uh, and the lightsaber, another thing, because we just saw that lightsaber break. We didn't technically see it break, but... We didn't see it, like, physically in two pieces, but we saw it starting to break, and it kind of, like, blew up um, as Holdo was shooting through that ship, which, I mean, that was incredible. Uh, the Millennium Falcon chase as well with the music from A New Hope, fantastic. Again, Luke used every ounce of his Force energy, and he left in peace, like Ray said. He's like, there wasn't... It wasn't bad. He, 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 he felt at peace, and Leia felt it, and I, I, that was... That was great. That was so good. And Ben Solo's like, are you here to save my soul? And he's like, no. And he's he's like, but I'm sorry, Ben. He's like, I'm sure you are. And it's like, like I loved the back and forth between these characters. I love Kylo Ren. I dress up as him for Halloween. I mean, Kylo Ren is so cool. 
and Ray is so cool. But the one plotline I didn't like, uh, and I loved Poe's plotline for the most part. Um, I liked Holdo, but the one plotline, and I, I've not talked about these two characters for a specific reason. I liked these two characters, Finn and Rose. And Benicio Del Toro's DJ character was okay. Um, and they also killed Adam Malakbar. But, uh, but no, when they go to the casino planet, um, Kanto Bite, yeah, is what it's called, I believe. Um, when they go to that planet, that, that, that was one of the scenes I was just like, okay, we're, we're slowing the movie down. There's like another plot line I'm really more interested in. That's the Ray, Luke, Kylo plot line. So much more interested in that plot line than any other plot line. Uh, just because we've been waiting for that. And this other thing just felt not tacked on, but it felt like it was a mission that they needed to do in order to complete something in this film that doesn't have any bearing once the movie's over because that mission failed. <laughs> so it's kind of just like, it is what it is. But what they, they set up there, the the animal cruelty, the slavery, and the um, war profiteering, those are three neat aspects of Star Wars that we've never seen before. I liked the Rose character. I liked that her, her sister dies in the beginning. And you see that. Like, I really enjoyed her character, and that she's kind of like fanboying over, you know, she's fangirling over a, a Finn. I liked that. But her plot line with Finn was just tacked on and pointless. And then the love story at the end with them didn't need it. I, I could give or take. Um, i trying to think of anything else. The, the R2-D2 moment where he plays the hologram of Princess Leia, I was almost in tears uh, because it, there was a lot of moments with Leia especially when Luke comes back at the end, that I'm just like, I know that this they, you, you did not touch this movie after she died, but man, does it feel like you did because like you're pulling on the heartstrings now. Um, it was it was incredible. I, I, I really, really liked this movie a lot. Like, I liked this movie a lot. Phasma goes, eh, who cares? She's Boba Fett, who cares? Two... Neat looking characters that do absolutely nothing. I didn't care because it's such a small part of the movie. Who cares? Uh, it was a neat fight between Phasma and Finn, but eh, who, who cares? And then the last thing, uh, Snoke. He just dies. And it was great. And I love that Snoke died because, one, he's extremely powerful. Uh, as we saw with, with how he treated Hux. He, like, force lightnings Kylo Ren. Like, I mean, there's some... And he just floating Ray around that room. I mean, I love when she grabs Kylo's lightsaber. That, that might be the, my favorite scene in the whole movie. Um, plus everything on the island as well with Luke. Uh, everything Luke does in the movie, great. I love the moment where, um, I'm just rambling now at this point, but the moment where uh, he tells Ray to sit down, he's like, all right, close your eyes and reach out. And she actually like reaches out and he's like, and he like takes that like branch or whatever he has and he like, like hits her on the fingers, she's like, oh, I feel the force. And he's like, you feel that? Yeah, is it really strong? And and, and, he, and he hits her on the hand. And it's like, really? And he's like, she's like, you meant like reach out? With, like, okay, yeah. Like, and then and then what she eventually learns is really cool. And I like the way that was intercut with the. She's like, balance. I feel life, death, warmth, cold, d destruction. All these things that she was saying, and it was intercutting with like nature footage. It was really interesting. I like the way Ryan Johnson did that. Overall, this movie's two and a half hours long, and I loved it. It was just, it was, it wasn't a perfect movie, but the good far outweighed anything I didn't like in the movie, or anything I felt was unnecessary, or not, n not even, something that just, again, the Canto Bite, the Canto Bite thing was just kind of like, Okay, they're at a casino planet. Like it's it was it was what it felt too much like Earth. And I heard some people say it felt Harry Potter. And it's in an extent it did. And I felt also that's where the CGI was the most noticeable and the effects were the most noticeable. It just didn't to me feel like it's it, I don't want to say it didn't feel like Star Wars. It just didn't feel like it fit the tone of the movie that they had set up. Okay? And that's really it. I mean, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, the Porgs, again, I, I get going all the way back to them. I loved the Porgs. I'm going to...
buy one. I mean, I, I the, the Porgs were really cute, and I like the scene with Chewie. I like all their interactions with Chewie. That whole, oh, again, Millennium Falcon chase at the end was magnificent. I don't know where Episode Nine is going. All I know is there's going to be some epic showdown between Rey and Kylo Ren. That's what I'm. That is the thing I am the most certain about. And that might be one of the coolest. If it's a fight sequence, obviously, and they don't subvert our expectations like they did a lot in this movie, which I was completely fine with, killing Snoke, turning Rey into just nobody, which I already thought she was, was fantastic. And, you know, killing Luke and all these things. Like, everything that they did in this movie either subverted your expectations or changed things, and it changed the characters around. Again, people that are like, Luke Skywalker is... Th that's not the Luke Skywalker I know. Okay, well, the Luke Skywalker you know was 30 years ago. Okay? That's a different Luke Skywalker before he trained Ben Solo, before he lost his entire temple, before the... Kylo turned those Jedi that he took with him into the Knights of Ren, which we're assuming. Like, there's so many things that happen between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, and that informs the Luke Skywalker character. The entire first movie is about Luke, Luke, where's Luke, where's Luke? We gotta get to Luke, we gotta get this lightsaber to Luke, we gotta find Luke, we gotta find the hope. We get there and realize, oh wait, the legend, which I love that they brought up, of Luke Skywalker is not what we think it is, because this man is a bro- he's a human being. He's a human being. And he's a broken man. And that's what I love the most about this movie. It's about not just growing as a person, but it's about the meaning of growing older and making mistakes and realizing your mistakes in life. And it was a fantastic movie. Uh, again, like I said, nine out- not 9.5 out of 10. I loved this movie. And no one can tell me otherwise. Now, I've had some great conversations with people on Facebook and the uh, Collider uh, Jedi Council fan page about this movie. A lot of people agree with me. A lot of people don't. And, you know, that's great. And, and that's the civil conversation I want people to have about this movie and not be like, well, you're dumb for thinking this. No, we all like different aspects of Star Wars. I just so happen to like practically all of it. You know, I love the originals. I love the prequels. I, I love these with all their faults. All their faults. And this, I would say, is my second favorite Star Wars movie. Uh, after really thinking about it, it's my it's my second favorite. <sighs> that was like 27, 28 minutes there of just rambling about Star Wars. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, comment below what you thought of the movie. Uh, anything you want to talk about. But do mark spoilers on your uh, comments, please. Uh, if there's anything you do want to talk about. In particular, I'm going to see the movie again tomorrow, and I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to like it even more. Uh, after just thinking about it and seeing these things, will probably seeing these things again will probably really inform how I really feel about this movie. I'm going to see this movie a bunch more times before the Blu-ray comes out, and then once the Blu-ray comes out, like I'm going to see it a bunch because I I looked earlier because uh, I keep a, a tab of all the movies I watched this year and how many times I watched. I've watched Rogue One nine times, and that's my third favorite Star Wars movie now. Uh, it was second, but now it's third because of this. Um, and I think this movie is slightly better than Rogue One, in my opinion. I love this movie. It was fantastic. Again, 9.5 out of 10, guys. Thank you so much for watching this long video. Uh, click subscribe down there. Comment below. Like this video. And as always, guys, thank you for watching. Go watch my other videos. I'm Andrew the College Critic, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.